Hey guys, Tebow here. Today we're going to be trying something new. I want to do kind of a deep dive on some of these commanders that I use on my ships. Get a lot of questions from people how to set them up, recommendations for inspiration and so forth. I just kind of want to go over my process on how I build my commander builds. A couple of notes. If you haven't seen it, I do have kind of an overarching uh, commander build strategy video that I made within the last month or so. I'll create a commander build playlist on my channel. I'll put that one in there. You should check that out. Um, if you haven't seen that, I think it kind of provides a good foundation on how I would upgrade commanders as a whole. And just a tip, if you're new to the game, you're just kind of figuring things out, I wouldn't promote your commanders past level 8 or rank 8 here. Uh, rank 7 is when you get your first inspiration. I guess 8 is... 8 used to be halfway um, maxed, which is why I pick it. But that'll allow you to A, unlock all these perks, get an inspiration, and level up your commander a fair amount to get a good feel for them without spending too many promotion orders, which is a valuable resource that you don't want to overspend, and especially insignias, which is even more rare. So that would be my recommendation if you're just getting started. But how I go about designing these commander builds as I look at the ships that I'm going to be using them on. So for me, I typically play tech tree ships um, tier 5 through 7 with a strong emphasis on tier 7. If there's premium ships in the line, I'll play those too, but I primarily will look at those upper half of the tech tree ships to kind of analyze the line. Look for strengths, look for weaknesses that are common throughout if at some point Wargaming implements the idea, which I strongly recommend they do, where you can customize a commander build for each ship and keep it there permanently without having to um, change it every time you switch ships, that would be ideal. But right now you just kind of have to set up a build. You can tinker with it every time you change ships if you want, but that's tedious and something I would never remember to do. So looking at the Fubugi, looking at the Akatsuki, looking at the Kigero, Strengths common throughout are torpedoes, obviously is a strong suit of the Japanese. Torpedo reload, uh, strongest at the tier on the Fubuki Akatsuki. Torpedo damage, strongest at the tier on all three. Torpedo range tends to be uh, quite, it's either the str um, strongest at the tier or tied as you get up uh, toward the higher tiers. They also do have really good rudder shift and top of the line concealment so those are kind of the strengths of the line and kind of the weaknesses of the line guns uh, the reload in particular and the turret traverse and the speed on the Kagero is the lowest at the tier and for the Akatsuki and the Kagero HP is the lowest at the tier so you want to analyze the ship line like I do here pick out the strengths to potentially maximize and pick out the weaknesses to potentially mitigate by looking at the builds. And I guess I should measure this, like, I primarily play the higher end tiers, but obviously if you're playing like middle tiers, lower tiers, whatever the ships you play, look at those ships to analyze them. Um, I guess that probably goes without saying. But since and I do want to put out on the IJN destroyers, currently they're all torpedo boats, this is the Kagero line. If in the future you come across this, I believe there's um, there's gunboats on the PC version, which I expect will be introduced at some point, presumably branching off at about tier 5. So the Karita, I believe, is the other destroyer commander. He'd probably be more of a gunboat build commander. You can set him up as Torps if he's the only one you have, but for the torpedo boats Tanaka is going to be the preferable one in my opinion so we're going to set them up with the torpedo play in mind now you have four different levels of perks I'm going to call them first one you have an option between just purely torpedo speed which is currently at my level plus four you see we have the same exact boost to torpedo speed with this one but we do also have the alternative trade-off which is cutting down the torpedo reload time and increasing the reload time of the destroyer's main guns. Now this is going to come down to your preference and how you want to set up your ship. 
for me, I'm de-emphasizing the guns, even though I probably fire the IJN Destroyer guns more than the average IJN Destroyer player would. I'm still focusing on the torpedoes. I'm trying to maximize the strengths of my ship. And I don't think I mentioned on the Kagero. The Kagero has the lowest, or it's either the lowest or really long torpedo reload time at its tier. A lot of people don't like the Kagero, and I think that's one of the reasons why. But if you focus on the reload in your build, you can actually get it back up to the strongest at the tier. So that's my goal here. I want to get as many torps in the water because that's the the strongest source of potential damage. So I'm willing to trade off a little bit of a detriment to the guns by incre or decreasing that torpedo reload time. Tier 2 for the perks, you have the option for just a straight up um, detectability decrease or an increase in your ship's concealment rating or you can actually have a stronger um, decrease of your detectability with a hit to the HP. Now going back to my intro where I said the Akatsuki and the Kagero both very weak in the HP department, I don't want to cut that HP anymore. We're going to enhance this very strong weakness and in my mind that's not worth the extra detectability um, decrease. Now I'll explain why Let's say, I mean, here's the deal. The Japanese destroyers already have the best detectability, and this is a percentage decrease of that, all right? So let's say it's a 5 detectability, for instance, and then we'll compare it to a destroyer that has a 7 detectability rating. So a minus 5% of that 7 is going to be a bigger increase than it will, or a decrease than it will be on a base concealment of five. You see what I'm saying? So because the detectability or the concealment's already very strong, you know, this helps, but it's not as major as you might think. Or if you compare it to like a German destroyer, which has a very high detectability rating, um, this something like this would be more influential and I don't want to cut down the HP, so I'm fine just running this, but again, the whole point of the commander system is to customize them as you see fit. Tier 3, I'll point out this one. I like the early warning indicator, but the rudder shift time decrease is basically almost a waste on this. They all have very good rudders on these IJN destroyers, so that's effectively not doing that much. Now the early warning indicator is good on ships that are going to be firing their guns a lot. Again, I do fire my guns. It would be somewhat helpful to have this on there, but the gun play is de-emphasized compared to the torpedoes. So this is my least favorite of these. These are the two that most people commonly um, pick one or the other from. My play style for Japanese destroyers is to get it in as close as I can, utilize that strong concealment, and then launch the torps from as close range as I can without being detected. If you're going to launch them at long range, that's fine. You'd want to go with this one, but the, the longer you launch on the torps, the more time they have to just minutely change their course, minutely change their speed, and you completely miss. So the longer the distance to the target, the less, the lower your percentage chance of those torps actually hitting is. So I don't find this one as effective. It does also cut down your guns. Now, I'm fine with that gun trade-off. Again, we're kind of de-emphasizing the guns on this build. So if you really want to be, quote-unquote, sniping with your torps at the longest range possible, you could consider using this one. But for me, cutting down that reload time, especially on the Kagero, which does have an inherently long reload time, this is far more valuable in my opinion. Tier 4 perks. Uh, the smoke is an interesting one for destroyers. Um, but the smoke, it's the second strongest out of the four lines we currently have. But offensively planting in a, yourself in a smoke cloud and firing your guns is not as strong of a play on the Japanese destroyers as it is, say, the USN destroyer line, which also has very strong smoke. It has the strongest smoke in the game. So because we're not going to be relying on that play as much, I don't find this one as valuable, especially considering our other option is to increase our speed. Now speed for me on the IJN destroyers is very important. Getting from point A to point B when you're identifying targets that need to be eliminated 
the extra speed is going to help you out. Again, the Kagero inherently uh, somewhat slow compared to the other destroyers. So this mitigate this rounds out that deficiency. Precision of the main guns, not that big of a deal to me. Most of my gun engagements are going to be close range against other destroyers or against ships that are low on HP and, you know, need to be eliminated as quickly as possible. You know, on the times that you are in the clouds, you know, shooting your guns, a little bit of a hit to the precision is not the end of the world when you compare the speed's going to affect your game positively from the start to finish the entire time. The chances, you know, the instances of your guns being a little less accurate, that's going to negatively uh, affect your gameplay. Those are smaller instances than the speed helping you the entire game. So that's the one I would recommend for this build. Legendary on this. Typically for destroyer commanders, you'll see this as an option. Uh, cutting down the engine repair time is fine. I, but I don't know what the engine repair time is up time at. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever it is. A minor decrease to that's not really that important in my mind because if your engine's busted, you need to use your damage con and continue to get out of there. Or if the damage con's not available, you need to use your smoke, conceal yourself, and wait till you can repair that engine. Sitting there exposed in the water, when people are shooting at you, you're going to die anyways. So this... This can help in some instances. I'm not saying it's worthless, and I'm not saying don't consider it. But for me, if you don't have your damage count and you don't have your smoke available, you're in deep trouble anyways. So this one, however, extremely valuable. You get an extra engine boost charge. Great for IJ and Destroyers. That'll allow you to boost right off the bat. As soon as the game launches, I typically boost in these. Get into position to scout, you know, IJ and Destroyers aren't necessarily as aggressive in capping as some of the other lines, but you can get close to that and use your your enhanced concealment to spot those other Destroyers. Hopefully your team's behind you supporting them, they can shoot, and then you can combine fire with them and eliminate that threat. And just having an engine, extra engine boost is going to help you immensely with the ship. Again, using that speed to kind of maximize your ship's ship's strengths. Also cutting down on the reload time and the dura and increasing the duration is nice. Typical engine boost lasts for two minutes, cool down three minutes. With this applied you add six seconds and decrease nine seconds from the cooldown and that's with the five percent um, changes that you can see here. Once you get it to level two that doubles so and you know given enough time you'll get it up to level three eventually so that's how I would personally set up these skills. I do want to point it out that these, especially as you level up your commander towards max, the perks are going to affect your build more than the inspirations. You can see here, this is a level 11 bay, and we get a negative 3.6, whereas this, you know, once we get this guy up a little bit, it's going to be a 6%. So that's a bigger... In if you look at these numbers, they're affecting your ship's build more and especially as you level up these commanders, then these, you know, you have a minus 2% on the reload time, which is the one I'm mainly interested in that one. So these are all important, the inspirations, but I would pick your commanders based on which perks you prefer first. Now, you got to include the base trait as one of your inspirations. So in my mind, you got to look at it like this. You have three inspirations available. You're stuck with one of them. So if you're if you have a commander like say Sims who has a really poor base trade for battleships, that's kind of a wasted inspiration. You're down you you're wasting one of three, but there's not much you can do about it. So if you can find a commander that has good perks that you like to build on those, and it has a good base trade, that's top tier commander. Those are the ones you really want to focus on. Next, you want to focus on people that have good perks and then if you don't have any of those available then <laughs> you're probably playing the Deutsche Dewey or the regular Dewey or the Jellicors of the world so just hang tight and hopefully you'll get a good commander from opening those crates. So now we're going to take a look at the inspirations. So we'll start with the two that I currently use and recommend. Bay has a minus 0.3 percent to your detectability per level so the further up you rank them the stronger it will be now again, 
we're talking about the lowest uh, base detectability currently available. So because this is a percent decrease, it, it doesn't affect these particular ships as it would compared to a destroyer that has high detectability to begin with. But because our build is primarily, it's building on the really strong concealment, we want to maintain that advantage and we don't want to allow other destroyer builds that are utilizing their concealment and boosting it to out spot us. So we're going to use Bay. He's the strongest. Um, he has the strongest influence on your destroyer's concealment and I would recommend using him. He's very strong and he's something you should definitely consider on all destroyer builds. Next up we have Reggie Tierwit. He, he has two in interesting ones. The main one for me is cutting down the torpedo reload time. So combining this inspiration and the two perks on our main build and we're actually able to get that torpedo time, um, the reload down to quite manageable levels. So that's a very strong aspect of Tierwood here. Now he does also decrease the chance of your steering gears getting busted. Destroyers engines and steering gears get busted all the time. So that's just kind of a little bit of a bonus in my opinion. Again, you're gonna be wanting to you know, you need to be able to heal that damage quickly or find a way out of that situation where you're in trouble anyways. But because it cuts down on the chance of it occurring anyways, that's a nice little bonus. But again, the torpedo reload reduction time is the highlight here. Next up, we have Swirsky. If you don't have Bay, Swirsky is the Polish commander that comes with the biscuit. He was the one I was using on all my destroyer builds before I got Bay. When uh, there's two different types of commanders, there's ones that say they affect destroyer, cruiser, battleships specifically, and then there's ones that say their trait will affect your ship. And the ones that affect the class specifically have a more profound impact. So Bay, for instance, 0.3% per level. Swirsky, because he applies to ship, it's 0.25%. Still valuable, but it's not as strong as Bay, so I bump him down here. I did experiment with the Bay Swirsky combo, but I was just finding, looking at the numbers when I had them both on there, I was just seeing a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 um, decrease, you know. So the de the combined effect of them both was very small, and I thought it was just a little bit overkill, and I would rather focus on cutting down that torpedo reload time with Tierwit. But you can certainly consider Swirsky and experiment with the builds um, for yourself. Next up we have Kurita. His uh, inspiration cuts down on your engine boost reload time. Again we've talked about the engine boost being a very important part of this build. I find that because I have that legendary trait that already adds a, an extra engine boost charge and also cuts down and quite massively that that's enough for me. But if you combined a high level of Kurita with that trait, or if you don't have a legendary um, Tanaka yet, that's definitely an option as well to consider. But you can play around with those options. Uh, I definitely consider him though. And Fraser, he increases your ship's speed. Now, again, the, it's kind of a theme, but speed is important with his IJN destroyers. Fraser's um, increase to the ship's speed. Again, ship is the keyword. So. We don't have a inspiration yet in the game that affects just destroyers. Perhaps one of the other nations that will be coming down the line will have a commander. And if that's the case, then he would kind of take the place of Fraser as who you should be considering here. But I'm not going to level Fraser very high at the moment just because we don't have British cruisers in the game. So there's no real reason for me to be putting points into him when there's other pressing matters that have higher priority. But it's definitely an option, you know. And Fraser could be considered on multiple different builds for different lines. Next up we have Vian. Now as you can see I don't have him currently unlocked so I can't tell how effective this inspiration is. I've talked to people in my discord though who use this guy regularly on different destroyer lines as an inspiration and if, if and when I get him I will definitely at least boost him up to level 8 and then play around with it and see how it affects the performance. Now anything you can do to preserve your destroyer's life in this case by decreasing the chance that it's getting shot by incoming fire, that's going to help you out. Again, I can't speak to the effectiveness of this, but if you have it, 
I would level it up to about the midway point. Play around with it and see how it works for you. Again, I've gotten some feedback that says it's quite effective. And finally, we do have Sims. USN Battleship Commander, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I think his base trade is absolutely worthless for battleships, but it is very valuable for destroyers. And like we talked about, HP is one of the negatives that we could consider mitigating by our commander build. So how his trait works is the higher you level it up, the more HP it provides. And then as you move up per tier, then it gives a bigger bonus. So again, I don't have him. I've been able to experiment with it, but a lot of feedback from people saying that that's a valuable trait for destroyers and one I will definitely play with if I ever get Sims, which doesn't seem to be too likely at this point but i'm sure it'll happen <laughs> so anyway that's my thoughts on this i do want to hear this is kind of an open forum is how i'm envisioning it because this is my idea this is how i play it but i want to have you guys provide information in the feedback or in the comments and kind of give me ideas and give each other ideas Let's tell us what works what doesn't what have you tried I think that'll be very valuable for people that are doing deep dives in their builds, trying to come up with something that works for them to get as much feedback as possible. So hopefully a lot of people will be chiming in there. Check the comments below. And also let me know what you think of this series. This is something I'm trying out here. Tell me what you think, if it's valuable, or <laughs> if I should focus on other stuff. So anyway, that's it for Tanaka. I hope you did find the information informative. And if you did like the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, you should consider subscribing. There's plenty of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, again, leave them below for me. I'd love to hear from you guys. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.